Hey guys, it's Monday, so that means it is time for me to check in with you and let you know how my week went, eating-wise. I think it went okay. Um, I still don't think that I've lost any weight yet, but that's okay. I mean, you know, if you're following, I don't even want to say following a diet, this plan, because that's not, no. Both books, the Intuitive Eating book and even the Josie Spinardi book, I think, talks about, you know, giving up the scale because it's not going to be a true reflection of how you feel, you know, mentally. But you may have eaten something salty or whatever, and um, that's going to make your weight fluctuate. Someone asked last week, do I weigh myself the same time every day and in the same clothes? Pretty much, yeah. Definitely the same clothes. I just have a set of pajamas that I make sure I wear Sunday night to Monday. And I'm awake. It's 8, 10 in the morning. I'm awake at pretty much the same time every day. So so how did my week go? Like I said, I think it went pretty good. Um, I do pretty good, I think, as far as getting my brain around you know, still trying to get my brain around not saying, oh, I can't eat this, I can't eat this, I can't eat this, and eating large amounts of food. Um, I feel like I do good until we go out on the weekend. But I do have to say, I am doing really good as far as if I want a snack, not taking the whole box with me. I will pour a little bit on a plate or in a bowl, and that's what I eat, and that's that. So that is still going well. You know, my ultimate goal at the end of this year has changed a little bit. Obviously, I would like to lose weight. I would. I can't imagine that 190 pounds is my natural set point, you know, where I'm supposed to be weighing. Um, but I just want to be able to not think about food. Do you know what I mean? I just want to be able to go somewhere and naturally just be like, okay, I want this and this and take a couple bites or, and stop when I'm full and I'm good. Like I'm not preoccupied with, oh, I can't eat this. I shouldn't eat that because I still have those thoughts because that's been the way I've lived my life for, you know, I'm 43 years old. So it's been the way I've lived for a really long time. Okay. So back to how the, the rest of the week went. Worked until... 8.30 on Friday. So Friday was a long, long day. And normally I would be like stressed and just wanting to eat all the things. Well, we ordered Chinese because I worked so late. And normally what I get for Chinese, I still get it. I get fried wonton, which it comes with eight of them. And then I get a pint of shrimp fried rice. Now, under normal circumstances, or I should say normally, I would eat all eight of those fried wonton and the whole thing of rice. That's a lot of food. This time, I ate four of the fried wonton and about a quarter of the rice. Um, my husband actually looked at my plate and said, that's all you're going to eat? I said, that's all I'm going to get because I'm pretty sure this is going to fill me. And it did. I ate all of it. but what, And then I, you know, you, you think, wow, the amount of food that I was eating astounding. Yeah. So I had that Chinese the next day and I even had some left over for the day after, but I threw it away. So I had enough for another meal. And then Saturday, because my husband is on call this week for work and Valentine's day is Wednesday. He said, why don't we go out to dinner on Saturday to celebrate Valentine's day early? So we went to the melting pot. And I don't know if any of you are familiar with that. It's a fondue restaurant and you get served cheese fondue in the beginning with bread and, and apple and vegetables. Then you have a main course where you get meat and pasta if that's what you choose. And then at the end you have a dessert. Oh my God, I had not eaten so much food in such a long time. I was so full. And you pay a lot for this meal. So it's almost like, and you're not taking it home because it's not cooked. Do you know what I mean? Like you cook it in a pot of water or at your table. So, oh my God, I was so full. And I said, man, well, we only go there like literally once a year, Valentine's Day or someone's birthday. So that's probably the only time this year we'll go. 
And then my husband yesterday, he got called into work because we got a lot of rain. And so I was home all day. I, I got back from my errands at like 11 and I was home. He didn't get home until 1045 that night. I didn't eat all the things, but I think I ate more than I normally would have. I mean, I sat and I stitched and I got a couple videos edited and things like that. So, but yeah, I, I think I did. The week went okay, except for, like I said, I ate so much food on Saturday though. But I wanted to give you some more tidbits. I finished the uh, Josie Spinardi book and I highlighted stuff as I went along. So she wants to say that carbs, fat, and your metabolism are not the problem. She says there's no such thing as a fattening food. No single food, and here's what I highlighted, no single food or food group for that matter has the ability to cause your body to gain or store weight. Sure, some foods are more calorically dense than others, but a higher number of calories per gram just means that a food has more potential fuel or energy. If you're listening to your body, eating only when you're hungry, and that is another thing. For me, feeling hungry means my stomach is growling, and I felt that this week. Most people don't even let themselves get to that point. Just saying. If you're eating only when you're hungry and stopping when you're satisfied, eating a high calorie food just means you'll feel full a lot sooner with a lot less food. You'd have to eat an entire vat of cabbage soup, for example, to feel as full as you would from a few bites of a hearty vegetable lasagna. That, that makes sense, but it flies in the face of um, like the low carb movement. But you know, I was thinking about low carb the other day. For me, it worked, it did, but again, it's a plan. And I think the reason that it worked was because after a while, you lose your, my appetite was decreased dramatically. And then you're eating less food. So yeah, that's why I think it, it winds up really, really working. Although there, I mean, there's scientific evidence behind it, but, um, but it makes sense because, you know, you could do a little experiment. Take a cupcake or take not, not a cupcake, take something that's like a really good plate of spaghetti with like meat sauce or something. And then, yeah, take like she said, like cabbage soup or something. And I guarantee you, you would have to eat a lot more soup than the spaghetti to feel full. It makes the most sense. Okay. Number two, she says, a slow metabolism does not make you heavier, but it could save you money. It'll make, because a slow metabolism will make you hungry less often. So if you're eating when you're hungry, that's, I mean, that's a point that she stresses through the whole book, and stopping when you're satisfied, a slow metabolism cannot ever make you gain weight. It simply means that you'll be hungry less often and your body will require less food. Because if you have a high metabolism, you're going to burn your, the food that you eat pretty quickly, and then you're going to be hungry again in like an hour or two, or whatever the time span is. Versus someone who has a slow metabolism, that you could eat a meal and eight hours later, you're, you're just getting hungry again. So everyone is different. Okay, she wants to say the single cause of weight gain it's simply that you take in more calories than your body needs for fuel. And like I said, it flies in the face of everyone I've watched talking about the low carb movement. But it's what I'm trying to follow because not, I don't, like I said, I don't even want to say follow. I'm just trying to have peace with food, I'm not saying I can't eat anything. Okay. Then she talks about why eating why you eat if you're not hungry oh, wait a minute i think i lost my place here okay so she goes on to say the problem is not you and i said this last week 
And the problem is not food. It really isn't. Because if you remember back when you were a kid, at least I remember when I was a kid, I was not overweight as a child. I didn't have any problems around food. Didn't think about, oh, I can't eat this. I ate when I was hungry and stopped when I wasn't. The real problem is the learned habit. Yes, here we go. The learned habit of overriding your body's internal signals for hunger and fullness, which really I think is the thing that is my ultimate goal this year is to really, really pay attention to my body. And I do when I'm, I'm by myself paying more and more attention to when I'm hungry and full, I do. So, but it's just like anything else, it's a habit. It takes time to build that. Okay, she says, so why would you eat when you're not hungry? Number one, she says, okay, then I, I highlighted number two. I don't even see what number one is. Number two is to change the way you feel. We've talked about the emotional part of this. People turn to emotional eating because let's face it, food does a pretty amazing job at changing your emotional state. When you eat something sugary, when you eat something, whatever you're craving, it does make you feel better. That's why pe there's tons of food people eat popcorn at the movies. It is. It's, I've, I've definitely been guilty of that many, many, many times. And when I've had a stressful day at work, I'm like, ooh, I want to have a good glass of wine and blah, 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 blah. And then the last thing that I want to mention about this chapter, and I said this a couple weeks ago, change is not linear, meaning... You know, we all want to have our mindset and our weight loss. And this is with anything you're trying to get straight. You want to have it like this. When in fact, it's all crazy, all twisted. So, I'm going to flip the camera around. I'm just going to keep going. So this week is going to be another week of checking in with my body as I eat. And I went to the grocery store yesterday and bought a bunch of actually pre-prepared foods that my grocery store makes. Because of my husband being on call this week, he may not be here at dinner times. I may be eating dinner alone a lot. So I sort of tried to prepare for that. But okay, I'm going to flip the camera around and step on the scale. Last week was 191.2. So we're going to see what it is today. All right, let's do this, right? Okay, 190.2, that means, wait a minute, let me let it do its thing. 190.2, so that means I have essentially lost a pound. Okay, I'll record that. I think that's actually the weight that I was two weeks ago. Okay, I'll see you guys next week.